Assalamu alaikum and hello to my non-Muslim viewers. Uh, in this video I will be explaining why David Wood is not worth any Muslim's time. So here we go. Uh, David Wood has a history of mental illness and mental problems. I mean that's no secret at this point. Uh, David Wood uh, tried to kill his own father with a hammer and his mom put him in a mental hospital. So David Wood has a uh, has a documented history of mental illness and mental problems. Uh, you know he's um, he's been institutionalized, and uh, you know his his own mother put him in a mental hospital or had him institutionalized. So um, so David Wood has a history of mental illness and um, mental instability. I mean this is no secret. Uh, you know it's this has already been. Um, this has already been said over and over. I mean, I think a lot of people already know this. Uh, so David Wood, um, you know, the 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 psyche or the the psychology of someone who tries to kill their own father with a hammer is so uh, so disturbing that you you don't even want to like mix in with somebody who's got that much mental illness or that much uh, mental problems so david wood um you know he's he's had a history of mental illness and he's had a history of mental problems you know um so uh uh you know that's that's one of the reasons why he's why if you're a muslim it's better to just not get involved with them or not interact with them because he has some kind of mental sickness um you know he's mentally sick and uh you know if you want proof of that uh just look at his history i mean he's been institutionalized when he was 18 years old and he tried to kill his father with a hammer now this is not the person who's the person who did something this vile and terrible is going to have mental illness or mental problems I mean, forever. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what religion they follow, but uh, they're gonna they're gonna be suffering from mental illness and mental sickness forever, you know. So, David Wood has a history of mental illness and mental problems. That's no secret, um, you know. And the fact that he tried to kill his father with a hammer, and the fact that he keeps repeating over and over this this incident is proof that he's a psychopath because only because the reason why psychopaths want to keep talking about that stuff over and over again is because they want to relive the moment in their head over and over again so david woodrow you know when he talks about trying to kill his father with a hammer he's trying to relive that moment in his head and that's how mentally disturbed and mentally sick he is so david wood has a history of mental illness and mental problems this is no secret Another reason why David Wood's not worth any Muslim's time is because David Wood just plagiarizes off other critics of Islam, like Robert Spencer, J. Smith, etc. So if you ever, if you ever notice, none of David Wood's um, arguments uh, or criticisms against Islam is unique. It's all plagiarized off other people, like Robert Spencer, who was active in criticizing Islam way before David Wood, uh, J. Smith, who was also active in, who was also an active critic of Islam way before David Wood arrived in the scene, etc., etc. So David Wood will will plagiarize off, you know, Orientalists too. It's not just Robert Spencer and J. Smith and stuff like that. He'll copy off, um, you know, Orientalists like the Orientalist. Uh, you know, came up with this, uh, with the argument to the Satanic Verses, and the Satanic Verses is found in Ibn Ishaq, al tabari etc., etc. But this story has already been refuted many, many, many times. But they would just keeps repeating same the same argument over and over again. And I'll get to that later. So and another problem is that so they would have just repeats, you know, outdated or already refuted arguments against Islam. I mean, that's no secret. Uh, if, you, if you really pay attention to his, um, his arguments against Islam, it's all, it's all been done before. It's either been done by Robert Spencer, J. Smith, you know, uh, William Moyer, who is an Orientalist, etc., etc. So it's all plagiarized material. Um, the other problem is David Wood just plagiarizes off other Christian apologists like William Lane Craig, etc., etc. So he'll use that same same old argument uh, for the resurrection, saying that Jesus' disciples believed in the resurrection and died 
for their belief in the resurrection, but that's been debunked over and over again, um, you know, by scholars of Christianity, not just, you know, people like Bart Ehrman, but even conservative scholars, uh, conservative Christian scholars say the fate of the disciples was a, like, we don't know what happens to a lot of them, the honest ones. So, you know, he just repeats the same old refuted Christian arguments that have been, or he keeps plagiarizing off other Christian apologists like William Lane Craig, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, another problem with David Wood is he seems to have some kind of creepy obsession with younger girls. Now, it's not inappropriate, but he has some kind of strange obsession with, you know, girls like who are much younger than him, um, who are like apostates from Islam. And this is very disturbing. Uh, you know, just like James White has a creepy thing uh, for younger boy, for younger boys or college kids, for example, James White, uh, you know, goes after associates and hangs out with like kids at least I don't know thirty or forty years younger than he is. Kids, uh, college Muslim college kids like Ijaz Ahmad, who's at least thirty. 35 years younger than him. So James White has a creepy thing for younger boys or Muslim college kids, you know, at least 30 or 35 or hell, even 40 years younger than he is. So, and that's the exact opposite with David Wood. David Wood has a creepy obsession with younger ex-Muslim girls or whatever, uh, Muslim girls who've converted to Christianity, Muslim girls who are at least, uh, you know, more at least, uh, 20, 25 years younger than he is, uh, or 30 years younger than he is. Um, so, you know, the, the case of this, I noticed this back like years ago when he kept going, when he kept, um, talking about Rick Faberi. Rick Faberi was that Sri Lankan or that Indian girl who ran away from, um, her family in Ohio and she made headlines saying that her father was going to kill her if she, uh, uh, came back to Ohio because Islam supposedly doesn't allow um, allows death for apostasy. So, and this turned out to be false. But David Wood kept on like talking about her uh, in his blog and stuff like that. So, you know, this is a very creepy thing. This is, you know, kind of a creepy thing with Christian apologists. Um, you know, David Wood's creepy obsession with younger girls is, is you know, it, it kind of creeps me out that he even pays attention to those girls. Um, you know, when they say they left Islam and they're following Christianity or whatever, and then David Wood makes some kind of, you know, stupid drama about it because that's what David Wood does. He's just, uh, he, he's just a psychopathic drama queen, just like James White is a crazy Christian apologist, um, who hangs out with like younger boys or Muslim college kids. Uh, so he's also crazy, but David Wood's even more creepier and more crazy and more psychotic than James White because he has a thing for um, obsession with younger girls. And this is like seriously creepy. So this is another reason why he's not, you know, why there's like no point in interacting with him, which uh, brings me to the final point. Uh, David Wood just repeats, like I said before, David Wood just repeats uh, same old arguments over and over again and he doesn't seem to understand he's been refuted and keeps repeating outdated and refuted and refuted arguments against islam and for christianity for example the satanic verses even though that's been refuted over and over again he'll just keep refuting he'll just keep repeating that that argument over and over again or the claim that prophet Muhammad tried to commit suicide uh, this claim has already been debunked over and over again by muslims over the years but he'll just keep repeating that same old argument over and over again so he doesn't seem to understand that he's been refuted and he keeps repeating outdated and refuted argu arguments against islam so i guess david wood has some kind of learning disability or something because you know he just doesn't seem to understand that he has uh he's been refuted over and over again so that just so that just the reasons why David Wood's not worth any Muslim's time. Now some Muslim emailed me uh, back in 2016, I think, and he asked me if I would debate David Wood again, and the answer is no. I, I mean, to me, there's no point in interacting with David Wood. Uh, you know, interacting with David Wood's just a waste of time because no matter how many times you refute an argument or that argument's for Christianity or against Islam, he'll just keep repeating that same argument over and over again. I mean, interacting with David Wood's like interacting with a wall. I mean, there's, there's no point because he just doesn't get it. Or I think he 
gets it, but he's just willfully ignorant. Um, you know, so I, I don't think it's worth the time or the effort, uh, you know, interacting with David Wood. I don't think there's any point in interacting with him. I honestly don't think he's worth any Muslim's time, you know, uh, for the reasons I've just said uh, above. But there's reasons I said before. Now, uh, am I the only one who thinks David Wood's not worth, you know, the time? No. Even Dr. Richard Carrier, who is a um, well-known atheist activist and um, a well-known independent scholar of Christianity and stuff like that, and he's author of several books and he's a blogger too, even Richard Carrier doesn't want anything to do with him. And I'll be playing a clip from an interview I did in 2016 where Richard Carrier says that Dave Woods, that, that and Richard Carrier's an atheist, he's not a Muslim, uh, you know, he's not a Muslim or he's not like uh, a Christian or whatever, he, Richard, Dr. Richard Carrier is an atheist and even Richard Carrier doesn't want anything to do with David Wood because he realizes there's no point in interacting with him because David Wood's a liar, he just lies about a lot of stuff, so, you know, this is, you know, it's just not worth the time interacting with these, you know, Christian fundamentalists and stuff like that, because they just don't seem to get it that, you know, the things they do is just, like, there's, it's just, not only is it creepy, but it's just, like, it's just a waste of time, to be honest. You know, Christian fundamentals like James White associating with like kids at least what thirty years younger than he is is just it just no nah, I, I don't know this is crazy to me. That's the problem with Christian fundamentalists. They're just you know they do all kinds of things that just don't make any kind of sense, and they have some kind of like strange obsession with Islam and. And it makes them do silly things like debate college kids or kids even much younger than they are and, and stuff like that. So I think that um, Christian fundamentalism is a serious problem. It brings out the worst in, you know, the already crazies. The crazies like James White or it brings out the worst in already psychopaths like David Wood. So that's just one of, that's just the reasons why I don't interact with David Wood anymore. I used to years ago but i as as time went on i realized there's no point in interacting with david wood because he just he lies a lot and um you know he's just a hate monger that's all he is he's not a scholar he has no scholarly uh credentials or training when it comes to christianity or islam so um you know if he if he at least had you know some kind of credentials um for islam and stuff like that um or PhD in Islamic studies and stuff like that, he might be, you know, he, he might be taken, there might be grounds to take him seriously, but he doesn't even have that, uh, you know, and same same reason I don't take James White seriously, because he's, James White's not a scholar, he has no scholarly credentials or anything like that, so he's, you know, it's just, um, so a lot of these Christian fundamentals, they're just not worth the time, to be honest. They just, uh, you know, they just don't, they just waste a lot of Muslims' time and things like that. You know, repeating either refuted arguments or doing stupid things like getting arrested and then saying there's Sharia in America. No, that's not, that's not, that's not how it is. If there's Sharia in America, they wouldn't have been arrested. They would have been killed. Or, you know, some Muslims would have, you know, like, physically fought them and things like that but that's not see that's that's what i'm saying though you know he just he just does all kinds of stupid things just to hate to further his hate mongering cause against islam um another thing is that david wood might actually be responsible for the death of nabil Qureshi. nabil Qureshi was a uh, ex uh Ahmadiyya who converted to uh, Christianity so the theory goes that and this is just a theory and you know I don't necessarily support it this theory but I don't necessarily this uh, do I, I don't necessarily not support the theory because I do believe in God and the supernatural I do believe in Allah and the supernatural and, and curses and stuff like that but the theory goes that David Woods cursed because he keeps hate mongering or criticizing Islam so that's why he has disabled kids and stuff like that. And the uh, theory goes that um, whoever associates with David Wood is also cursed. For example, they, uh, 
Nabil Qureshi is one of, one of, was one of David Wood's uh, closest friends. So the theory goes that the reason why Nabil Qureshi got stomach cancer and died is because he was influenced by David Wood. David Wood taught him how to like lie and you know, pretend he's an ex-Muslim. And well, David Wood led him away from Ahmadiyya Islam to Christianity. So the uh, theory goes that uh, um, you know God cursed Nabil Qureshi with stomach cancer and killed him because he was associating with David Wood. So um, so the theory goes that David Wood's cursed and because he keeps hate mongering against Islam and criticizing Islam and because of that. Uh, because of that, he suffers from, you know, disabled kids or, uh, you know, the Bill Creation died because of him and uh, things like that. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issues with David Wood and, um, y you know, things like that. He's cursed and uh, things. So that's why he's not worth any Muslim's time because, uh, you know, he's, he's got some serious mental problems and, Things like that. So he's just not he's just not worth the time or the effort from uh, Muslims. Um, so uh, so that's uh, what I wanted to say about that. I'll, I'm just going to play a clip uh, from Richard Carrier uh, saying from Dr. Richard Carrier saying that why he won't associate with David Wood. So it's not just Muslims who don't want who think he's a waste of time. Or even atheists like Richard Carrier think he's a waste of time. And I'm going to play that clip now. Who's the worst Christian apologist you had to deal with? Like, flat out, like, you know, online or in person? Like, the, 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 the worst. Well, David Wood, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which, and I don't deal with him anymore. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, on, on my website... Oh, you talked about that. Yeah, now. on my website you can find my... Uh, the, li li the Deceptions Lies of David Wood. David Wood. The Deceptions of David Wood. Uh, where I, way back then, he, he lied about what was in my book, Sense of Goodness Without God. And, uh, and so I document that. And it's just like, they were just so... Craven. It was just so wanton, the lies. And then, you know, he didn't own up to it or, or fix it. He just doubled down on his lies. And so dealing with that, that's when I realized he was just such a fundamentally dishonest person that there's just no point in even interacting with him. Um, and so and so I haven't. I don't, I don't know if I have since then, but hardly at all. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that guy is kind of despicable in that yeah. regard. Yeah, I, I, I don't like dealing with them. We'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Let's talk about Christian apologist David Wood. Uh, <laughs> I know I know you call him a liar, and he isn't an honest person. And we talked about that earlier. Um, a lot of my viewers actually don't like David Wood. Uh, they think he's gone to the extreme in his hate mongering uh, Sounds against, like, yeah. against Islam and, and, and atheism and stuff like that. So, what do you have to say uh, about David Wood? Um, you know, like, uh, would you would you debate him? Would would, would, would there be any? Well, what? Do you have any suggestions for to deal with people like David Wood? Because he's getting on the nerves of a lot of Muslims. Yeah, right. no, I wouldn't debate him because he's so fundamentally dishonest. Um, the uh, the thing you have to do with these people is you have to discredit them. You have to ac actually accumulate the evidence that shows that these are not honest people. They're not reliable authorities, so that no one should trust them. No one should be listening to them anymore. Um, and and that that that's the effective way to do it. You want you want to discredit them and show and with honest true evidence that says like these people like you you shouldn't even be listening to this guy anymore uh, and and that's I think once you do that and then the only people who are going to listen to him are people who already agree with him who are already hate mongers themselves right um, and, and then you've, you've accomplished your goal essentially you, you've reduced his influence because there, there'll be people who don't know that he's such a liar who don't know how he's distorting reality they don't know um, uh, how he's like you know ginning up hate and if you you can actually expose all of that uh, that's a useful service. Uh, actually, you know, he's done that for us because there, there was an incident in the 2010 mm -hmm. Arab Fest yeah. where he purposely had cameras and he was purposely doing stuff um, to provoke, like, you know, um, security and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he got arrested and he made a big deal out of it. Right, yeah. And he was on Fox News uh, uh, talking about, like, all the Sharia in America <laughs> and uh, uh, stuff like that. So he, he's kind of he's kind of getting on the news. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And he's getting more popular for some reason. Yeah. So you know, I, I don't like I don't like discussing him, but he's just you know, he's just, he's, his influence is, is getting bigger. So I was just wondering your thoughts on that. Yeah, I um, I would suspect, in so far as his influence is getting bigger, is that the that he's appealing to rising Islamophobia in general. So yeah. I think it, it's uh, he's not helping. No, no, he's I mean he's just playing. He's pandering to that audience, right? Uh -huh. Essentially, uh, and that audience is growing up without him. It's just he's you know that's obviously where he's getting his 
uh, you know, support is yeah support and his his food essentially I, well not literal food but yeah. the the thing that's feeding him yeah uh, exactly. yeah. Yeah, so like psychologically, there's something wrong with him. He had like antisocial right. personality disorder. He tried to kill his own father with a hammer. His mom yeah. in a mental hospital. So there, there is something wrong with him. So you know, I, I don't, I don't blame you for for, for not ha- having anything to do with him. I wouldn't want anything to do with him either. Uh, 